You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. This is Beth Packard with Supernatural Living, and today I have a special treat for you. I have here in the studio with me a very dear friend and sister in Christ. Her name is Jennifer Martin, and I am sure that some of you already know her and follow her on Facebook. I'm so excited, Jennifer, to have you. Thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, we have got, so Mundy and Jennifer are here for the weekend doing a conference at our church, the Gathering Revival Center, um, Awaken the Heart. This is uh, Jennifer's weekly ministry that she does on Facebook called Awaken the Heart. And I am excited. I want to just dive in. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, we had the honor of having Jordan Parkinson here, and she talked to us a little bit about women in ministry. And so we're just going to get back into that. That was something that was one of our highest um, listen to podcasts. And so people are really interested in this. They want to know like how women get their start in ministry and the obstacles that they're going through and just what that looks like scripturally, you know, just all around the board. And so we're going to see what the Holy Spirit wants to touch on today and get into that. And I'm really excited to just let Jennifer share some of like how long they've been in the ministry and um, really when you got your start with Awaken the Heart. That is really what I want to touch on and just go into more detail of what transitioned, what changed in you, Jennifer, when God called you into that, like how he called you into that, what your biggest challenge was that that's kind of what I'm looking for. Mm. Is that specific enough for you to, to go after? All right. So I'd love to share about, um, so Monday and I, my husband is Monday Martin and together our ministry is contagious love international. And we've been in ministry now for, uh, 18 years. Wow. And uh, most of that was us traveling overseas. We did a lot of mission work. We did a lot of compassion acts. Nice. Uh, we went to many, many nations. We've been to over 30 nations wow. by the grace of God. Wow. And seeing God move in miracles and salvations um, and providing for the poor um, mm-hmm. in many, many nations. Uh, so we also have two children. We have a boy who is 12 and a girl who is 11. And so uh, during the early years of our ministry before children, uh, I traveled a lot overseas and that was our passion. That's what we wanted to do. I loved it. I just felt called to love on people and to bring Jesus wherever I could go. I just was called. I loved the Lord and I wanted to go wherever he would open the door. Yes. So we would get invitations and we would go and we would not have one penny (laughs) <laughs> to go to any of these places. <laughs> but who knows that us women, we have stubborn faith. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we believe God. You women know what I'm talking about out there. <laughs> we believe that the Lord will provide for everything. So we would book our tickets wow. with not a penny wow. and end up paying the tickets off the day before we'd leave and we'd go overseas. And this happened time and time again. And I would just throw back my head and laugh a little bit like Sarah in the Bible, (laughs) who was told of a promise from God and laughed at the promise because she thought this is impossible. There is no way that I will have a baby at 99. Well, who knows what's impossible with men is possible with God. That's right. And some of you (laughs) might be throwing back your head and laughing at the things God's put in your heart and the dreams that God's put in your heart. But what if God manifests those dreams? What do we do then Yeah, when we've laughed at the dreams and the promises of God? But yes, yes, God behind the scenes is working miracles to cause these things to come to pass, That's right. to show us in our face 
that he is God yes. and that what he yes. establishes and what he calls, he is more than able to do amen. in your life. Yes, amen. So how does this pertain to me? And Beth, you know, please feel free to interrupt me whenever you think of something. But so how does this pertain to me? So I'm traveling and I'm doing all this ministry yet, guys, I didn't do any preaching or speaking hardly at all. I did outreach. I did one-on-one ministry. I did things like this. And, and, uh, Monday was the one that would do a lot of the meetings and the ministry and the preaching. And I was fine with that because I was a shy little girl. Yeah. And I was young and I didn't know anything and I didn't <laughs> think I knew anything right. and I didn't think I had anything to give. Mm. Literally, I said, I have nothing in my heart or in my life or any experience that I could share with anyone to help them in any way. Wow. Powerful so, lies there. Right. So I would just hand out things to people you know, and give the love of Jesus because that's easy. We can do that. We can show love through compassion acts and through Mm -hmm. serving and through giving. And everyone can do that. That's, that's just a gift of hospitality. It's a wonderful thing. That's the gift of love. So what drove me to the place where I said, God wants me to do a little bit more. Yeah. God started enlarging my heart and putting a dream inside of me to speak and to teach. (laughs) I started desiring to do it. I didn't know why I did. It just started becoming part of who I was and it wasn't there. So for those of you that are asking yourselves, what am I even called to do? I would say, what do you dream of doing? That's right. Because where you are and the season you are in and where God is taking you will be like life inside of your bones. Yes. It'll be active Absolutely. inside of you. Yes. You won't have to ask the question. You will know and feel inside yeah. your heart what you're supposed to do. It'll be alive. That's right. You'll know it. You know, that happened with me. Like it did. I, I, I love being a mother and I loved, you know, everything that had to do with that. But there was something that just started stirring and coming alive in me. Mm-hmm. And I thought, what's what is this? Like, is this even okay? I felt like almost trapped because I had such a desire and such a longing to do more and to, to be more than just a mom and just this. And, and I almost felt like the confines of religion, like saying, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. Did you ever go through that part of it? Right. So also there's this this guilt yes. that tries to attach to women yeah, because we feel our first ministry is to our family. Yes. And it is yes. our first ministry is to our family. In no way does God say, you know, forsake your children, That's right. you know, and, and leave and, you know, go after your calling. I don't, yeah. I don't agree with that one bit, but the Lord will give you the ability and the wisdom to do both yes, where will. you are faithful mm-hmm. to your family, faithful to your husband, faithful to your children, not forsaking them in any way, not neglecting and at the same time, faithful to your ministry or your That's calling right. or what God has put in your hands to do. So a lot of the times guilt Beth would hold yeah. me back too, because I would think I have to be completely a hundred percent all in with my kids right now. I right. can't, I can't do that. I can't travel. I can't speak. I can't do that. I, I need to be there. And, and that would, you know, cause them to suffer or cause them to miss out on things. Right. And you know what? The kids are more resilient than yes, you think. They are. They, sure they are not going to be traumatized. Yeah. If you put them in a car and drive them to a place where you're going to teach and preach the word of God, I promise you that they are not going to miss out That's on anything. True. In fact, they're going to get the presence of the Lord. They are. Well, but they also see you walking out your calling. Mm-hmm. They see you stepping into something that is not just about them. And it's not so small. It's not just your family. It's, it's 
got an influence, a nationwide, a, a worldwide influence, like as we step into our destinies and our callings with the Lord, like it's so much bigger than just our families. Yes. And I think that's really important for us to show our children and to not be held back by that fear or that guilt or, yes. you know, just limited mindsets of what God has called us to as women and moms. So. Yes. They need to see it. Yeah. They need to see that you're important enough. That's right. Moms, you're important enough yes. to follow your dreams. That's right. And when they look at mom and they're, they they think mom is following her dreams. Yes. She's doing everything yeah. that God's put in her heart. And that lets me know that we're important. Yes. Because they see that as an example. And when they grow up, mm -hmm. they're going to look at their own dreams as important. Yes, they are. They're going to know it's yeah. okay. And it's right for them to follow after their dreams That's true. and to not forsake That's who good. they are That's for good. their children. Yeah. So we as moms, by doing what we thought <laughs> was not okay to do, by yeah. actually thinking about ourselves, ladies, right. yes. for a change, yes. taking time for ourselves, making sure that you have things that you need. Go see a friend. Yes. Go spend time with somebody. Drink a cup of coffee with a friend. Yes. These things are important. They are. And very. our children watch us. They see us taking time for ourselves, pouring into ourselves, mm. and they will find self-value. Yes. That's right. By looking at us. And when they're older, they're going to value their own lives. That's and become right. amazing that's, role models. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Wow. So what, what would you say, um, as you said, it, it, we were talking before the show, it was, it's been about 18 months since you started the awaken the heart mm -hmm. on Facebook live. And mm -hmm. what would you say was the biggest, like, as you stepped into that, just kind of tell me, like, I know I watched in the beginning, but I don't remember exactly your story, like how that came about and what obstacles you jumped through and what you had to just surrender in order to be able to do that and really step out. Right. How do you go from one season in your life yes. to shifting a complete everything around and transitioning yeah. to a whole nother season in your life takes patience <laughs> and time and progress yeah. and leaning into the Lord Yeah, because it didn't come overnight. I didn't learn how to uh, do the homeschooling because I'm homeschooling. Yeah. I didn't learn how to do the schedule with the children and then leaving to go out of town all at once. But I found how to make it work and I found how to make it fit through prayer yeah. and leaning into the Lord and asking for the spirit of wisdom. God, teach me how to make this work. So I didn't just sit around. I found a way to make it work. Yeah, I, have, I had to find a way to make my dreams work, yeah. or the children's dreams work, my husband's dreams work, and them all flow together. And it will always, it will always come to pass. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it will always, it will always work out because it is the plan of the Lord. And you have to trust right. that. That he knows the plans he has for you, plans to prosper yeah. you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, and that the Lord orders our steps. Yeah. We have to f fully trust in that. And so I, I did it by faith. Wow. I did it by trust. I started to walk and, and to see how is this going to work and to reach out and to start doing a little bit more here and start speaking a little bit more here and taking invitations and things like that. And so... I did about one conference a year for many years and, and I was comfortable with that in the mm -hmm. summer so that I didn't, you know, uh, leave the homeschool schedule. So I did that, um, and didn't really feel like I was supposed to do more. I was just kind of assisting Monday and, you know, sharing my heart with people. Yeah. But Beth, I didn't believe in myself. Yeah. I did not believe I was doing it, but I didn't have confidence at yeah. all. I was not fully assured that what I shared or spoke was even touching anyone's hearts. Right. I was so insecure that I would just shake when I was speaking and mm -hmm. didn't know, didn't know anything. You know, I just felt like I didn't know anything. Yeah. I didn't know how to teach. I didn't know how to preach. And so I backed away from it. Yeah. Because every example I'd ever seen in ministry, every professional pulpit, 
person that I saw, every personality that I saw, every gifting that I saw, I would look at them and I'd try to find something of me in them Yeah, that wow. would give me some kind of permission mm-hmm. that if that's what anointing looks like, if that's what calling looks like, and if that's what speaking looks like, then surely I have to have one of those qualities right. Wow. if I'm really called. Yeah. So this is what stopped me for many years, Beth, Wow. because I didn't look like any of them. Yeah. So obviously I wasn't called. <laughs> Oh, dang. Because I didn't have their gifts. I didn't have their anointing. I didn't have their personalities. You know, I didn't have the way that they ministered to God and the Mm -hmm. way that they delivered their preaching with eloquence and and vernacular and the vocabulary (laughs) that I can't ever find. You know, I didn't major in English. Right. So I don't have all these big words. I understand. So I didn't feel smart. Right. That know? holds so many women back. Yes. I, it's That's the vulnerability and the realness and the rawness that this whole generation is looking for, though. They mm-hmm. don't want. We can look at stages and the people with the microphones and see like this beautiful manicured, you know, but that's also them in their maturity. Mm-hmm. Whereas when we're starting out, you know, we've got to be willing to take that step and to just let God mold us. And that's what I've loved to watch you over the last year and a half. You know, like I'm just, I feel like I'm just now stepping into this. Mm-hmm. And um, I love being able to watch you grow and, you know, just become you, unique, right. transparent, you know, just be who God created you to be. And you don't look like anybody else. And that's actually what makes you set apart. Like we are called to be set apart, to look different than others and to be unique in who God's made us. And so I just, I just love that about you. And I know so many others do. That's why so many people are refreshed and honored by like what you're doing. And they love that because you step through that fear and you push through that and all that junk that was coming, all those lies that were coming against you and you did it anyway. Yeah. And you're freeing people in that you are freeing others who feel that same way. And so keep right. going. I'm so excited. Sometimes you, you have to do it afraid yes. and you have to do it not knowing Absolutely. that you don't know where it's going to lead. Yeah. You don't know the end. You don't know the results. Right. But you know, the one who's called you, Yes, you know, the one who sent you. Yeah. And isn't that enough? It is. Isn't he enough that we could trust him that if he's called us, mm. he's faithful. Yeah. To perform yeah. that which he's called us to do. Yes. And then we have to trust in that his wisdom's above ours. His yes. thoughts are above <laughs> ours. His ways are above That's ours. So, so for under, for whatever reason that God wants Jennifer Martin <laughs> to speak her heart to people yeah. and be wide open mm. and transparent and broken and yeah. messy and weeping and in love with Jesus. Yeah. For whatever reason that he wants that, because I love him so much, yeah. I told him, I will do whatever yeah. he wants. Yeah. And if that's what you want, Lord, then I'll do it. Because I shied away from the microphone for many, many years. Even Monday would say, Jen, I'd like you to come speak or share something on your yeah. heart. And I would say, no, I have nothing to say. I literally felt like I, that is not my place. I am yeah. not called to that. And so how did I get to the place? I've still not answered this question. <laughs> That's okay. I'm trying to answer it in pieces. <laughs> how have I gotten to the place where I believed enough to open my mouth yes. and open my heart yeah. and open my arms to a lost and broken world? Well, God is a very patient father <laughs> yes, he is. and he will talk to you and send people to you and send situations to you and give you dreams yeah. and give you prophetic words yeah. and give you more prophetic words and then give you more prophetic words until you finally listen until we finally <laughs> listen yep. our hard hearted stiff necked selves. <laughs> That don't believe in God in us enough. Finally wake up and we hear the call of his sweet voice. We hear him as a dove in the window cooing at us in the morning sun. (laughs) I'm getting poetic. (laughs) We hear that call of his brooding over us. Wow. You know, we hear that dove. We hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and something 
happens in the right time, in the right season, at the right moment, there will be a fulfillment. You Mm -hmm. haven't missed it. You haven't made mistakes. If there is a delay on your calling, your life, what you're trying to step into right now, ladies, if there is any delay, there's got to be a purpose in it. There's got to be a reason because the Lord encouraged me to come forth. He would give me these dreams and I I don't have time to tell them all to tell the, the impact of what they did and the symbolism and the voices he would use in the dreams and the leaders and the things that, that the Lord would say to me to, to get me to believe in myself and just go and be like a child and open your mouth and trust that I'm going to fill your mouth and trust that I'm going to speak through you, you know, to get me to that place took many years. Yeah. Of weeping and crying and saying, okay, Lord, I believe. And, you know, having the snot fest on the floor yes. with the Lord, which yes. we all need. And in those moments is where we yeah. actually transition. It's probably the That's moments right. we answer yeah. that call, you know, the season in our life. Is, so these, yeah. these dreams and all these encounters happen. I finally got to the place where I said, yes. Mm. Okay. You're not bombarding me like this for nothing. Right. You obviously want me to respond. Yes. yes. Right. God doesn't just give us dreams so we can feel good about ourselves and get goosebumps all right. over. But he wants us to do something with it. So I said, yes. And guess what happened, Beth? I started trying to step out and do everything and yeah. make the connections and step out and, and, and just whatever I could do and put my hands to because I knew the Lord was going to back it. And I right. knew that he was going to, you know, put me forward and, and exalt my ministry. And I knew all this stuff was going to happen. Not one thing would open up to me. Wow. Now, why did that happen? After all of these years, God's bombarding me to answer the call. I finally answer the call. Then he closes up heaven like brass to me and doesn't answer one thing, puts no favor, doesn't let me step in anything. There's no breakthrough. I could have given up. I could have stopped. Wow. And you know what? The Lord showed me because through all of that, I had to break again. Wow. I thought I was ready. Thought I was broken. Thought I was humbled enough. You know, we're so humble. We're so ready to answer the call. It's we know it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. Is it really? Or was there a little bit of pride still left in Jennifer Martin that needed to be dealt with? And there was ambition that started to rise up in me. Oh, wow. And the underlying foundation, what was going on, was me wanting to be received Mm, by people and by God. And the whole thing was about making me feel better in my insecurity that I was still walking in. Wow. And the Lord said, and I knew that he was saying, this will stay shut to you until you no longer care. Wow. Beth, I went through years of getting to a place where I lost all desire to do anything else because I fell so in love with Jesus that I did not even get excited about ministry invitations. And as this process started to unfold, where all I wanted to do was stay in the secret place Mm -hmm. and get to know him and Mm -hmm. dive into the love of Christ. When that happened in my life and I literally said, Lord, I don't even want to speak anymore. I I am so content in you. Wow. I said, I am so (laughs) happy that I am saved that I don't need that now to be fulfilled. Right. Bet that was in that moment. Wow. Everything opened up. That week. Wow. That things began to open up and the Lord started to speak to me and rend my heart before wow. him. And he said, now you're ready. Wow. Because before it was about your kingdom. Yeah. And now wow. you've really made it about my kingdom. Wow. Where truly. Yeah. We deny ourselves and lay down our lives and we pick up our cross and follow <laughs> Jesus. Can we say that everything we are doing is being led by heaven? Right. Or are we leading ourselves and our own ambitions to build our own kingdom before God? That's right. So what? We can have a trophy in heaven? Right. There is no trophies in heaven. There's one trophy. 
Wow. The crown that Jesus will yeah. hand out to the heirs of salvation. Yeah. That wow. those that are in love with him will throw back at his yes. feet. We don't because even want we him. don't care. <laughs> wow. We don't care about any of it. We're wow. so in love with him that we want him to have the reward of his suffering. We want him to have the fruit that is due to his name. He is yes. worthy of it yes, all. Jesus. And when I came to that place in my yes. heart, and even when he would open doors and, and I would go and speak and teach, and even now, just talking to you and, and, and talking to you about the Lord. Do you know, even in these moments, all my heart longs to do is to crawl back into that place yeah. of the heart of the Father. Yeah. You know, just, it doesn't satisfy, guys. Yeah. If you think ministry satisfies, I've got news for you. No way. <laughs> Being within a, having a microphone and speaking and teaching people does not satisfy, does it, Beth? No. The only thing that truly satisfies is the love of Christ, yeah. the salvation of what we already have in him. It's the only thing. And until you reach that place of realizing that satisfaction, you can strive, you can reach yeah. for all these goals and they will never make you happy. Even when you get them, they That's will not right. bring joy. That's right. So let's let these things all belong to God. Yeah. Let's just give wow. it all to the yeah. Lord. Give Say your calling, down. give your children, yes. give your husband, give everything to the Lord, your ministry, your your job, your entrepreneurship, whatever it is, just really give it to him where yeah. you're not holding on That's and you're right. making it about him and letting it be a blessing to his kingdom. And then you'll see favor and increase happen. Wow. You will see so much favor That's... and increase happen and you don't even care about it. And you don't even <laughs> care about it. And he just keeps making doors open and favor know, and right? things come to you. And you really don't even want it now. You right. don't even pray for it anymore. You don't ask for it anymore. Because all everywhere. you want is just to be filled with the spirit of God. Yeah. And then yeah. here it all comes. See, it's all back. Like a magnet. Right. It's like a magnet. Wow. Here like, it all comes. So much confirmation just in that. Because like I just, a couple, I think it was last week, I interviewed with a friend of mine, April, on a Facebook live and we talked about all that and about like in that moment when the Lord like showed me what he was calling me to, I was just like, I can't handle this Lord. Like I can't do this, you know? And, and he said, you can, but you, you have to become intimate, like more intimate with me. And I just, I literally remember laying, I'm so going to cry, laying every single one of those things down at the cross right in front of him and just said, I don't want any of it. I want you. I just want you, Lord, and I'm not picking any of this stuff back up until you tell me I can have it. Mm. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Just saying, I just want you. I want to be able to to do this, but I just want you. And I literally two weeks ago, three weeks ago, had a dream where the Lord said, you know what? Four years ago, when you wanted this, you weren't ready for it. Mm. But you know what, Beth? You're ready now. And he spoke that to me and said, you are ready now. And I just wept. And I told Aaron, I said, I don't want to come out of the prayer closet. That's where I want to be. <laughs> and he's like, get out of the prayer closet. I need you to speak to my people, you know? And I'm like, but I want to be there. And Aaron's like dragging yeah. me out the other day. And he's like, what are you doing? You need to do that. You know, you have stuff to do. And I'm like, but Jesus, he's, he, you know, and it's just. So now I'm like processing and trying to find, you know, like he's everywhere and he's in everything. I know I messaged you a couple of days ago and I'm doing laundry and I'm just like, his presence is just all over me. And I'm like, okay, I can do laundry in your presence. Yes. Like you're everywhere, Lord. Like this is what I want. Just come everywhere and just consume it, you know, just consume everything. Yes. Oh, you can be wow. in the glory doing dishes. Yes. I mean, I can't remember how many times I've sat and scrubbed dishes, weeping like a baby. <laughs> yeah. And my children are right there on the other side of the sink where their desks are and their computers wow. are and they're doing their school and things. And they'll look at me and they'll say, Mom, are, are you, you OK? okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, honey. I just love Jesus so much. I can't contain it. That's like, amazing. Oh, okay. But they've seen it so much that they're used to it, you know. And that is true. See, I used to, back in the day, if I didn't have my four hours, you know, in the bedroom or in my prayer closet, you know, just alone with the Lord, yeah. then I thought, you know, I can't keep up my relationship. I can't have the intimacy. I can't be happy. I can't be fulfilled. And that's not true because yeah. women, you know, as you have a family and ministry and things and your children, which takes up most of your time, especially yes. young babies. 
Now, you can't do that. You can't put your baby down and go for four hours right. and, and, and pray. And you, you just can't, can't. Even go to the bathroom so, alone. So you ha- <laughs> Right. There's no privacy anymore. You just forget about that. When was the last time you were ever in the restroom alone? You know, if you have children, you guys know what we're talking about. It's like, can I get a minute? You know, just a minute. And so you find how to be in the presence of the Lord everywhere you go. And you realize it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that he doesn't leave us. He doesn't go away. He's everywhere. He fills the universe. He fills, you know, he even goes into the depths of hell. His presence is there, David said. Like, there is no escaping of the Lord. Yes. We think we've escaped him. We've not escaped him. There is no escaping. He, we see him everywhere. And therefore, Uh, Mm -hmm. We can be in his presence Mm -hmm. every single moment, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. I'll be in the middle of working, sending out emails, and he'll just come in with his sweet presence and swoop down. And just for a minute, he takes all of my attention away from my work, you know, and the things that I'm doing. And he just gets all of my attention for a minute, you know. He just wants to sweep in and kiss you and hug you and say, hey, I love you, you know. And it's about fellowship and all the things we can do for him and bring to him. It's just about being with him. That's all that matters. So, So even as you are answering the call of what he tells you to do, being enraptured with his love and the whole reason you want to do it is because you just love him so much yeah. and you just can't wait to do it for him yes, and not right. for yourself. That's and right. so when he, when he started, you guys, Hey, we are going to pause for now. I know this is so cruel, but we are going to pause and I'm going to come back next week on the next episode with my sweet friend, Jennifer, and I'm going to let her share her story about how she made that step, the step into her calling and, and stepping out into a more visible role in the ministry. And she's going to share some prophetic dreams that she had about uh, beginning Awaken the Heart, her soaking sessions that she does online. I just encourage you guys, if you are blessed by this, would you make sure you are following her on Facebook at Jennifer Martin? Um, they, her, her, husband and her have a page as well. Um, follow Awaken the Heart. Look for Awaken the Heart and check out the soaking sessions. You're going to want to see that and just be part of that community and the amazing things that are going on there. If you guys want to sow a seed or become monthly partners with Monday and Jennifer, you can do that by going to Contagious Love, I-N-T-L.com. I'll put it in the uh, information on the podcast as well so you can see that again. They are just, they're going into the nations and they're just blessing so many and just spreading the contagious love of Jesus Christ throughout the nations. And so we're just blessed. We're so blessed to have them. And I just want to encourage you to sow a seed into the harvest. If you guys are blessed by the podcast and you want to partner with the podcast and help us to be able to reach more people, you can do that as well. You can do that at Beth packer.com. You can find out more information there and, and partner as well. If you'd like when we partner and when we sow into the ground, when we sow into what God is doing in a region, in a city, in even your own life. And when you're seeing people who are have gone through the breakthrough that you want, it is such a great opportunity for you to sow into that. And receive a breakthrough with that. We just, wherever we plant a seed, that is what we're going to reap. We're going to reap a harvest of that. And so I just encourage you guys to put those seeds in the ground, put good seeds in the ground. And these two places are just wonderful places to, um, trustworthy places. I just, Monday and Jennifer are just incredible and we just love them with all our hearts. They are amazing. They're the real deal, you know? And so we've just been so blessed by him. And I am looking forward to you guys getting to hear the whole story next week about stepping into the calling that God has on Jennifer's life. And even some of the similarities with my own life and how I think that because there's so many similarities, I believe that you guys also are going to find similarities and you're going to be so blessed by it. So make sure you subscribe to this podcast right now. You need to go subscribe 
subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Turn the little notification on so that it will alert you next week so you don't miss it. And you can go back and listen to the previous podcast too and share and rate and review and that will help us get into more listeners ears. We love you so much. You guys be blessed. Have an amazing week. Step into that intimacy this week. I encourage you step into that intimacy with the Lord. Just take some quiet time and just be alone with him. I love you guys. Until next week, be blessed. Be blessed.